This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am Pastor Marianne Kellenbach, pastor at Living Faith Church, which is located in the beautiful community that's called Port St. Lucie in the state of Florida. And uh, today is June the 16th. It is the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. And for all of the gentlemen out there, whether you are a dad, an as-if dad, a grandpa, a, an uncle, even brothers, happy celebration on this day. As you are a father-like figure to many in your lives. So we recognize you on this day. A uh, couple of announcements that I have. First thing, uh, for those of you who are worshiping from afar, welcome. A couple of things. One is I want to let you know that, um, let's see. Oh, Carl, are you doing slides today? Oh, okay, thank you. Um, first thing I want to let you know that it, there is a prayer service this Wednesday evening. It is Juneteenth, and if you don't know what that is, it is a national holiday, and it is a wonderful time for us to gather at 7 p.m. at the church property. Make sure that you bring a chair. I will have some bug spray in case you forget it. Um, some water, it might be a bit warm out there. Um, and we will celebrate Juneteenth, and if you don't know what it is, you will find out about it. So it is uh, the day that we remember the true, really, that second day that we celebrate independence when um, all Americans are truly set free. So that is uh, Wednesday evening. Book study will be June the 24th, which is a week from tomorrow. At 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, it will be via Zoom. And the reason I say Eastern time is because I know that many of you who are worshiping from afar are going to be um, joining us from other time zones. So uh, just want to make sure that you know it is 6.30 p.m. Eastern time, and that Zoom link will go out later on this week. And I'm trying to think if there's any other announcements. For those of you who are worshiping from afar, um, an email was sent out that has both a copy of the liturgy that we use today, so you're able to see it. I got a thumbs up, yeah, real happy about that, as well as the announcements. Don't forget to take home your announcements. There's lots of information in here. And um, another, actually there's, we're going to hear the parable of the seeds today two parables, but there's a third parable that actually comes before the two that we hear. That kind of sounds a little backwards, doesn't it? But make sure that you take a look at this and, and have some time to spend in dwelling on uh, the parable of the sower. So on that note, I think I've got everything. I want to check. How's Lorna? It's Lorna, yes? Still alive. Yay! Okay. Just Checking in on that one. All right, great. I invite you now to stand as together we begin our time of worship. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of seeds on earth. It grows up and becomes the greatest of shrubs, and the birds of the air make nests in its shade. Give thanks to God whose promised rain is coming. Thanks be to God. We begin our time together in confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. God will not count our trespasses against us, longing instead for us to be reconciled. We come before God then in honesty, humility, and hope. Gracious God, we so often miss your kingdom at work among us. Captivated by power and prestige, we overlook the mustard seeds you have planted all around. Forgive us for failing to notice where and how you are at work. Forgive us when we work against your plans and purposes fostering divisions when you have called us to a ministry of reconciliation. 
beset by apathy when the world has such deep needs, building walls to keep people out when your branches offer generous nests. Help us to grow in faithfulness, we pray, so that we might reach our fullest height of faith. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Hear these glorious words. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us, for you, for me, while we still were sinners. And for his sake, God does forgive you all your sins. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And our opening song is one that was composed specifically for this congregation. Uh, both music and the lyrics are by our very own Lishalan. As you're able. What a wonderful way to start our worship together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. God, you are the gardener of all creation. You planted this world with the seeds of your love and grow them with your faithfulness. We are your harvest. We find meaning and sustenance in you. May our minds listen to you calling. May our hearts be attuned to your will. May our feet follow you in the world. Through Jesus, the word become flesh. Amen. Our gospel this morning is the gospel according to Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There's a crowd that is gathered around Jesus. He had gotten into a boat. It was just so crowded around him, and he continues to teach them with parables. Jesus went on to say, the kingdom of God is like this. A man scattered seed in his field. He sleeps at night, is up and about during the day, and all the while 
the seeds are sprouting and growing. Yet, he does not know how it happens. The soil itself makes the plants grow and bear fruit. First, the tender stalk appears, then the head, and finally, the head full of grain. When the grain is ripe, the man starts cutting it with his sickle because the harvest time has come. What shall we say the kingdom of God is like, asked Jesus. What parable shall we use to explain it? It is like this. A man takes a mustard seed, the smallest seed in the world, and plants it in the ground. After a while, it grows up and becomes the biggest of all plants. It puts out such large branches that the birds come and make their nests in its shade. Jesus preached his message to the people using many other parables like these. He told them as much as they could understand. He would not speak to them without using parables. But when he was alone with his disciples, he would explain everything to them. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. shirt what does it say what number is it six six who turned six years old you did Woo! you had a birthday shall we sing happy birthday to you happy birthday to you Happy birthday, dear beautiful child of God. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Ooh, did you 
did you have a good birthday? Yeah, we, you got a chance to celebrate the day you were born. Oh my gosh, what a fabulous day that was, huh? You have a good and his baptismal day, yes, 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 yes. And that's your new birth, right? Can you come a little closer? I promise you, I'm not gonna hurt you. Come a little closer. So we're gonna talk about prayer. Do you pray? Do you? Yeah, what prayers do you say? Do you say um, the Lord's Prayer? You know the Lord's Prayer, right? Yeah. What is the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Yeah, Jesus taught us to pray that. Do you pray any other times? At night time. Every night you say your prayers. That is really awesome. What kind of prayers do you say? Do you thank God for a great day that you had? And to keep everybody safe during the nighttime? Yeah. Do you pray before meals? I'm going to teach you a prayer. Oh, we're going to practice that. We're going to start something new. And Tita and Abuela, it's in here. So come here, Ryan. I want you to say these. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. You're six now. Come here. Come here. Come sit right over here because I want you to read this. You, you're a sloth? Let me tell you something about a sloth. Like, I have a perfect sermon for sloths. So you're going to get a preview of this. How do sloths see the world? Slow. Slow and what else? Upside down. Just keep that in mind. So you be a sloth, all right. OK. So what does that say? Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. That word is guest. Let these gifts to us be blessed. And what's that word? Amen. Amen, yes. So shall we say it together? I'm going to put it right here. So you hold it, hold it. Ready? So let's, let's, uh... okay. Let's pretend what you can do, as long as Abuela and Tita say it's okay to get a snack after we do this. So you'd, you would pray before you eat a snack. No, they're not going to let you have one? All right. Hey. Oh, you don't want any? Oh, OK. Well, then I probably will have one. So let's say this prayer together. Ready? And anybody else who knows it, before we eat any type of meal, Mr. You know, Mr. Carl and I pray all the time before our meals. And sometimes Mr. Carl will say, did we pray? He does. He's like, did we pray? And I'm like, well, if we're not sure, we'll just say it again. <laughs> that's right. That's it. That's exact. And you know what? We pray when we're at a restaurant. And sometimes the person who's taking our order will sit down with us and pray. Really, which is really cool. So hold this. Uh, 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 come on. Hold this. Ready? Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. Should we say it one more time? Yes. And that's a mic drop. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. Amen. Mic drop. <laughs> exactly. So let's pray. Gracious Lord God, we give you thanks for everything that you have given to us. I give you thanks for the gift of Ryan. Aww. 
Aw, yeah, I, get, I give you thanks for the gift of Ryan. Such a joy. I see your spirit in him shining right through. Your soul is in him. Continue to pour out your blessing upon him. Continue to instill in him wisdom, kindness, joy, the Holy Spirit, bravery, compassion, and pure love, and your peace which surpasses all understanding. Hold him ever so closely as he grows in your love, as his faith becomes deeper, and he celebrates who you are every day in his life. Help him as he learns this prayer and gives thanks for all that you have given to him, his family, his friends, his church family, his teachers, and all those who are a part of his life. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. All right, and here you go. You can take this because you got to say that this week. That's your homework for this week. Think you can do it? Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. Amen. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, new sneakers? <laughs> Oh, let us pray. New sound. New sound. Isn't it great to be sick and discover things yes. for the first time? <laughs> oh, let us pray. May the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. When um, I had graduated from college, I went back to school to get a master in business. And that was in like the mid 80s. And back then, did we even have fax machines back then? I'm trying to think, we had fax machines, but we did not have cell phones, right? So one of the things that I did my um, thesis on was the changing um, environment of technology. Now keep in mind, it was all about fax machines, okay? And there had been, and I did some studies on how that was changing our brains and the way in which we were conducting ourselves. So I use the example in my paper about um, <clears throat> how if you were a lawyer and you would hand write, so I started to say longhand <laughs> because that's what I think of when you're not typing in, the, uh, in a machine, right? It's longhand, longhand. So you would write out whatever the brief was or if you were going to um, bring uh, a, a, a tort against somebody. And so you would write it out and then the lawyer in the evening uh, would hand it to a typing pool. Typing, okay? I'm trying to think, I think the Wang machines, we used to call them the Wang, you know, pool, right? So, and we'd hand it to them. Wang was the first processors, word processors that came out. And then you would leave, right? And they would type it up, print it out, and it would be in your inbox the next day. And so then you'd go through it. Meanwhile, your brain is sort of like working on this. And um, you would then make some corrections, move some things around. At that time, you knew editing, right? You knew how to use editing tools, you know, the, well, the tools that editors use when they're marking things up. And so then you would hand it back again to the Wang team, and they would type it up, and you would get it again the next day. So this would take a while. And then when the fax machine came, it was like, whoa, I can fax this over right away. Prior to that, we had delivery services, right? We would have mail, but then in, in Manhattan, where uh, Carl and I had worked, you would have cyclists that would ride around, these couriers. And so then the fax machine came, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. I faxed it off, you know? So now you had to wait for the response. And that could take days because you'd be going through that same process. And it was wonderful because you really had time to dwell and to think about things. And then what happened? We were able email, but we had 
like computers on our desks. Prior to that, we had an administrative assistant who basically did all that. And then the next thing you know, there's no more administrative assistants. What do you have? Your own computer. And then you can email it. And it's going back and forth super, 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 super fast to the point where you're not even thinking anymore about what it is that you're typing. Have you ever sent an email and said, uh-oh? Mm-hmm. We've all done that. Yes, we have all done that. Actually, Carl and I laugh if there's something that we're watching on television. We'll say, who is that actor again? I've seen him around. Let me get my phone. You know, what used to be a huge computer room is the phone, and there I am. Oh, he's this person. Oh, he's been in this movie. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's where I know him from, which is wonderful. But the speed in which we are working right now is killing us, in all honesty. We're forgetting how to slow down. And the same can be true for the food that we grow. Now, I'm a city girl. I will be the first one to admit that I have no idea. Well, I do know where the food comes from, OK? That part I do know. But I don't know anything about growing until, embarrassing to say, I went to Minnesota to go to seminary. And there I learned all about the fact that these seeds are modified. Many of my friends in seminary, their spouse, were, I can't even remember what the word was, agrominous or some, something, where they basically are modifying the seed. And I never really thought about that until I've discovered that when I was in Europe last year and I would eat bread, my stomach did not hurt. When I got home, I said, oh, maybe I'm okay with bread now. No, I wasn't. It hurt my stomach all over again. And I discovered that in Europe, they grow the grain the old-fashioned way. And in the United States, we change it. It's called dwarf wheat, so it will grow quickly, doesn't grow as high, so that we can feed people quicker. It's about quickness. So what I've learned is I can eat it in Europe, I can't eat it here. What is it about us wanting to do things so fast? Yeah. How about miracle Grow? Anybody know miracle Grow? Anybody use miracle Grow? Yeah, basically what we're doing is we're spraying on to our plants all of the nutrients that are in the soil. And after a while, the soil doesn't do what the soil is supposed to do because we're forcing this plant to grow. And if you use too much miracle Grow, what happens? You kill it. You actually poison it. Jesus is talking to the disciples this morning about, um, well, not this morning, but this morning we hear the story or the parable. A parable is a story that comes alongside a truth. That is a parable. And Jesus is talking about seeds. And the first one that Jesus talks about is the mystery of the growth of the kingdom. Now, we could miss this. This is only contained in Mark's gospel. What Jesus is saying here is that the sower goes out and sows the seed and then does nothing. Nothing. We can miss that because we think then, oh, the, then the, the sower, the farmer's going to, you know, take care of the seed and all. Nothing. Nothing goes on. Sleep, get up. Sleep, get up. And then all of a sudden, the stalk comes up and then the head, and then the full grain of the head. Nothing. The kingdom of God is like. We don't like that, do we? See, we think we're supposed to be doing things, but that's what the kingdom of God is like. I'll give you an example. When I was in my late 20s, I returned to my original faith tradition, and I just wasn't connecting. And so then I tried a different faith tradition, which, is, which was Lutheran. And the pastor at that church, now, mind you, 
that congregation worshipped an average of 50 to 60 people. We're on Long Island. It's one of those old fashioned looking churches, 50 to 60 people. Now, when you're used to worshiping in a huge congregation and you go into 50 or 60 people, it's a little bit scary, but I kept on going back. Something was drawing me back. And then the pastor said, I'm going to have a conversation. It was a Sunday afternoon at three o'clock. We're going to talk about grace. So just come have some cookies and tea. So I remember saying to Carl, I'm going. He's like, well, I'm not going. So <laughs> I said, well, I'm going and hoping, hoping I wasn't going to be the only one. Guess what? I was the only one that showed up. Now, my immediate reaction was, oh, my goodness, I'm very, feeling very vulnerable. The reason I'm going is because I don't know anything about grace. But the thing is that I knew that I wanted to get more. How can I get more? Because that's the faith tradition I was raised in. Are there any other ways than what I had been taught? So I looked at the pastor and I said, you know, it's just me. Why, why, just reschedule it. Just reschedule it. Like, I want it out of there. Because I did not want that pastor to know that I knew nothing. Of course, little did I know, the pastor already knew that. And he graciously said to me, it's not just you, it's you. The tea is almost ready, let me get the cookies. And he takes two chairs, very comfortable chairs, and puts them not quite facing each other, but you know, facing a little incline, and here's the table, and he comes out, and I'm really nervous. And he said, so, how would you define grace? I said, I don't know, but what I've been taught is I get to start with a little bit of it from God, and now I have to get more. So that's what I'm here for. I need to understand how do I get more of this? What is grace to you? And then he went on to share grace, God's unconditional love, God's mercy, God's forgiveness, nothing that we do and everything that God has done for us. That was totally foreign to me. And I really didn't understand it. I was not grasping it at all. It was totally upside down like the sloth. And I couldn't right side myself. And we talked for a good hour and a half and I walked out of there more confused, other than the fact that I understood I needed to have this dwell in me. God's word of unconditional love in the death and resurrection of Jesus. I did not understand this pure grace. I did not understand that in my baptism, God chose me. I did not understand that the meal was not a reenactment of the death and resurrection of Jesus, but it was the sacrament of God's grace given to me. I did not understand any of that, but I did know that I wanted to learn more. And that pastor knew something was going on inside me. And so he would pull me aside every now and then, we'd have conversation. And then he invited me to work with the youth. And I said, yes. Now, I was working in corporate at that time. Didn't know how I was going to do it. I was working in New Jersey. But I said, yes. And I started to work with the youth. And the more I was getting grounded in scripture, the more things started to open up for me. That soil, that soil that wasn't afraid to ask questions anymore, to admit that I didn't know and I didn't understand. And now look, how did this happen? I couldn't tell you. I was 29 years old when I met with that pastor for the first time. And at 46 years old, I left corporate to go work in children, youth, and family ministry full-time. And I decided 
that, boy, if I'm going to work with these kids, then I really need to understand. So I started a Master of Arts in Children, Youth, and Family Ministry at Luther Seminary. Little did I know that the seed was being planted more and more and more. Now people are beginning to see in me something that I didn't quite see. And many came to me and said, you really need to think about. And that's how I moved into becoming a pastor. How many years? 53 years old I was when I was ordained. Crazy. That's what this parable is about. You can't rush it. It's God's timing. The kingdom grows as God will have it grow. And that growth is slow. And sometimes you move forward and sometimes you move back. And other times you move forward and you move back. That's how the kingdom grows. Who ever thought that that 28, 29 year old that was sitting there would finally understand in her heart that grace is the most freeing thing in the world. It is given to you at a great cost to our Lord, but it is given to us. And once I began to understand that, all I wanted to do was share that freedom, jump off the rat race and say, you are loved for exactly who you are, God's grace. You do nothing to earn that grace. You are now given the pure freedom to go out and share that with everyone. Who knew? He didn't know. I didn't know. That God would use me as a seed to share God's word to others and to plant right here in Port St. Lucie. The second parable talks about size. Now we know that a mustard seed is not the smallest of seeds, but at that time it was the smallest or considered the smallest of seeds. And Mark's gospel is the only gospel that does not talk about it growing into a shrub, which then grows into a huge tree. No, Mark's gospel says it becomes a shrub whose branches spread out and become shade for birds. Have you ever seen a bird's nest in a shrub? I never did until the shrub died and I saw a nest in there. Or one other time, Carl and I are sitting and we're watching this shrub going back and forth, back and forth. There was our neighbors and all of a sudden, a snake comes flying out. We're like, what the heck was that? We saw the snake come, I mean, flying out, and the snake went slithering away, and this bird popped its head out. It was a mockingbird. Is it safe? Yeah. I mean, it's like, so that is what Jesus is saying. It's not, it is the opposite of what you think. Big is not what it's about. It's about what we do. It's about the growth. It's about the shrub. It's about the planting of a small seed to grow into something that you wouldn't even begin to imagine that provides shade, a, a place of rest, a place of peace. I look at each and every one of you, and my heart is filled with joy because the Lord is working in you. And many of you, who are not worshiping with us physically present today, some of you have moved, you are taking that seed into your community. That's the kingdom of God. It is the miracle of growth that we can't comprehend. And it's on God's timing, God's perfect timing. Think of those seeds the seed that has been planted in you, that gift of unconditional love, mercy, forgiveness, 
so that you get to go out and share and be God's hands and feet right where you are and every place that you go to. On this day, let the Lord shine through you for the sake of kingdom growth. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. Filled with the Holy Spirit, we join with the church in every place, praying for the world that God so loves. We pray for peace. Eternal God, you sent us a savior, Jesus Christ, to break down the walls of hostility that divide us. Send peace to the places where greed, pride, and anger turn nation against nation, race against race, church against church. We pray for the leaders of the church and the nations. Mighty God, sovereign of all, give the leaders of the church and the leaders of nations the vision of your kingdom, that they may lead us with justice and goodwill. We pray for the earth, God's creation. God of creation, you made all things in your wisdom and love. Grant us all of reverence for the earth, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others, and to your honor and glory. We pray for those who are in pain in body and mind, especially those we name in our hearts or out loud before you now. Frank, Manny, Pete, Bill, Cecilia, Tyler, Lorna, Caden, Angela, Steve, Jeff, Jeffrey, Carol, Karen, Jennifer, Joe, Jackie, Dave, Patrick, Ray, Mark, Dwayne, Lene, Bobby, Nancy, Glenn, Karen, Gertrude, Beverly, Fred, Camilla, and Rob. Merciful God, you bear the pain of the world. Look with compassion on those who are sick. Stand with those who sorrow. Show them home by your word. Bring healing as a sign of your grace. Let us pray for friends and families and this morning for the men in our lives. God of love, bless us and those we love, our friends and families, so that by drawing close to you, we may be drawn closer to each other. By the sure guidance, of your Holy Spirit, O oh God, we lift up our prayers in trust and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. This is a true statement. God has provided us all that we need. It is truly our privilege to give back to God. Let us return a portion of what God has so freely given to us. Let us now humbly bring our gifts to the Lord. You may be seated. This is the time in which your offering can be made for the work that we do in God's kingdom here on earth through our hands and through our feet and through each other. For those of you who make your offering in person, you're invited to do so now. For those of you who 
have already made your offering online, thank you. And for those of you who would like to make your offering online, you can do so now by going to lfc.church. And now we have a wonderful um, offering gift of voice and music um, by Liz and Mariano. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul? For my soul to bear the dreadful curse for my soul. When I was sinking down, sinking down, sinking down, when I was sinking down, sinking down. his crown for my soul for my soul Christ laid aside his crown for my soul to God and to the Lamb I will sing I will sing to God and to the Lamb I will sing you to stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who, on the cross, opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, 
he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As children of God, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come, and let us eat. For now the feast is spread. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to invite the communion assistants to come forward at this time. This is the Lord's table, right, Ryan? Is, whose table is this? God's, God's table. Who's invited to come up here for this meal? Everybody. This is the Lord's table. It's not my table, it's not your table. It's the Lord's table. So all are invited to come forward to receive this gift, this gift of grace, unconditional love, mercy, joy, forgiveness, that peace which surpasses all understanding. Come forward and taste the promise that you have been given. When you come forward, you'll be handed a piece of bread and invited to dip that either uh, into, well, the two chalices both contain wine. If you have any type of a gluten intolerance or an intolerance to wine, we do have a gluten-free and wine-free, it's called grape juice, option uh, for you. So come forward. The table has been set and you are all invited to this meal. I'd like to invite the musicians to come forward at this time.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Okay. So before I give you the benediction, I want to let you know we have so many treats in abundance. This is like God's, oh my gosh. Thank you so much to Sandy and Joy who provided our treats. Please take some home with you. Yes. Now receive the blessing. May God bless you with new life. Christ tend you in grace and the Holy Spirit guide your steps as you walk by faith now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we get to hear, go my children. Let's sing it loud. <laughs> pure so go now and live into the good news of Jesus Christ which is pure love trusting in our faithful God who sets us free today and every day we go forth together living our faith knowing that everywhere we go everyone we meet everything we do we are Christ's hands and feet so let's go